right. <laughs> and uh, we. Nobody says nothing about 
myself in the middle of doing something I shouldn't be doing because I should have figured this out a long time ago because I have plenty of Thank everybody. Right. Um, Nick Jarvis. <laughs> they got that bit. Like. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, the first poem I'm going to do for you tonight is um, something I get really fascinated about. I was going to say as a poet, but no, just in daily life, which irritates people when I'm not being a poet, and possibly when I am. Um, is I like to investigate concepts and language, particularly. I get quite fascinated on words. And one time I got a bit fixated on the idea of the beginning. So I decided to explore it um, using the word beginning and turn it into a poem, which I called Many Beginnings. It goes like this. There is no beginning. Beginning to begin beginning. Outside of the beginning of the beginning, that begins to begin beginning, as the beginning begins, even if many beginnings are beginning to begin beginning, as the beginning of the beginning begins to begin beginning. Is everybody with me? <laughs> <laughs> so that's how that goes. I don't, I don't get much further than that. You should have read my thing. It's better, it's not much better if I go slower than I that. <laughs> really slow. You got one more time? Yeah, okay, right, see if you can follow this time. Okay. <laughs> and a deep breath before I go. <laughs> <laughs> can I read out? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> there is no beginning, beginning to begin beginning, outside of the beginning of the beginning that begins to begin beginning as the beginning begins, even if many beginnings are beginning to begin beginning as the beginning of the beginning begins to begin beginning. Now you got it, didn't you? Yeah. 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 Okay, that was just a short, simple one. Um, I'm going to follow it up with a, um, one about something which will hopefully kind of um, click a little bit quicker. Um, something that we all experience every day. It's about that great British institution, the cup of tea. And that it's called... Would you mind making me a cup of tea? <laughs> Would you mind? If, if it's not too much trouble, and if it won't make you think I'm asking too much of you, or not appreciating you, because I do appreciate you, even though I know I might not always show it quite as much as I should do. And, and I don't want it to make you think that I'm being a chauvinist either, because I don't really think that women belong in the kitchen. Even though I know you will have to actually go to the kitchen. If, if you were going to make, which I'd like you to make, but you don't have to make. Only do it if it's something that you want to do. A cup of tea for me. <laughs> and you know I'll repay the favour sometime. Even though I know I didn't make a tea that one time when you asked me when I was really tired. But I probably should have done anyway because I knew that you would have a hard day too. And when I said favour... I didn't mean like a sexual favour, although of course I'm, I'm not ruling that out, but I, I want you to know that I want you for more than just your body. Although your body is beautiful, but so is your mind. Which isn't to say that your body is any less beautiful now that your mind is beautiful, which was of course always beautiful, although I just hadn't mentioned it before. But I didn't want you to think that I hadn't been thinking about it. And, and I know you often say that I think too much, but this, this wasn't that kind of thinking. It was just, just a passing thought. Not that you're a passing thought. <laughs> I think about you all the time. Although not in the way that is the way when you say that I've been thinking too much. No, just in the way that a person might do when they, you know, like, love you. Um, 
Memoirs of a Church Girl. I remember Sunday mornings, Grandma coming up the stairs singing church songs about how much she loves Jesus Christ. I never understood why she got up so early, making so much noise in the house, doing the things she could have done when she got back from church. Leaving church, then had to rush home, cook the chicken already seasoned from the night before, getting shouted at the, to watch the pot while it simmered, then rushing to get the doors for aunties and uncles who would come to dinner. There were always noisy little cousins running around, drunk uncles drinking the rum in the living room, even though it was only four in the afternoon. I remember my first Sunday without Christ. No need to get up early, put on Sunday's best, comb my hair properly and wear a nice pretty dress that I always used to press the night before and hang it by the door. See, I had considered myself enlightened from a generation of lies presented to me as fact. Carefully built up walls around the imprisoned souls of my mother before me and my grandmother before her. But the truth of my life has shattered. The truth of my existence is now falsified, searching my room for the truth, trying to discern the lies. See, I rejected the Bible's truth, but still looked to the omnipresent to explain my roots. See, since the moment of consciousness, humankind have been searching for where we come from, desperately trying to find somewhere to belong, have looked about the stars and tried to make sense of what we saw. And then Marx came along and declared religion to be like opium, no disease but merely the symptom, an expression of the material realities of the economically repressed, used to make the exploited poor feel better about their distress. See, see the hand of salvation in your face make you sing to the heavens free at last. Not no redemption comes at a cost. Like drug dealers dangle a crack to a mother, so the authority offers Jesus Christ in a platter. So long gone are my days of Sunday best. You can tell God this Sunday is my day best. Thank you. <laughs> some time to see myself get by.